Wild Mind Comic Presence Reincarnated as an Energy with a System Chapter 42, One Bird with Two Shot A few days had passed by now. The days were so dull that Ning didn't even bother keeping track of it. Every day, he would wake up early in the morning and absorb 5 million energy as soon as the max energy cooldown was gone. He spent the rest of his days teleporting around, searching for more food to send back to those villagers. Everything he had sent until now was just fruits. There was nothing else on this island to send. He had spent a few million energies increasing the weight limit of his interdimensional storage so that he could send back more things at once and not waste energy on multiple trips. He had been to every single part of the jungle by now and truly knew just how scary it was. The animals he met at the start were nothing compared to the monsters that stayed deep inside the forest. However, they were only scary for him. For the villagers who could lift rocks like it was nothing and had muscles harder than steel, these monsters were probably as cute as pets. Ning was bored of teleporting around now. Since he knew there was nothing here, he wanted to go back. Hmm. He looked up as he heard something. A crow-like bird with black feathers and white talons landed on the ground next to him. It was there for the berries that he had just sent back. Since there were still some, the bird started eating it. Whoa, that's a huge bird, he thought. The bird was larger than an ostrich that was kept in the zoo. It looked like a crow too. Damn, this bird would be enough to feed the entire village. It's probably heavier than that fish, he thought. It was then a thought occurred to his mind. Should I kill this bird, he thought. Instinctively, he wanted to jump into the bird and start absorbing its energy until it died from it, but he remembered that he was capped out on absorbing energy, so he couldn't do that. Then, will air cutter be enough, he wondered. Let's try it. He targeted the bird and decided to release a rather large air cutter. He released 50,000 energy worth of air cutter. He spent 40,000 to make it 2 meters long to encompass the bird's size and spent the remaining 10,000 energy to increase its damage. Swish! The slash flew out of the air and landed on the bird. Caw! The bird shouted out loud. The slash managed barely digging deep enough to show blood, but not enough to harm it in any significant way. Shit! Ming thought. Seeing the bird trying to run away he immediately used another air cutter towards the bird. Only this time, he used 100,000 energy. With a six times more powerful attack, the slash in the air flew directly to the bird and chopped the bird in half which still managing to fly a bit further before disappearing. Phew, Ning sighed as he saw the bird fall into two parts. Damn. It nearly got away, he thought. He looked at the innards of the beast spilling a bit and cringed. Oh god. It looks worse than inside that fish's stomach or those many birds devouring their prey. Now it was time to do something about the corpse. He had managed to kill it, but now he needed to send it back to the other island. But the bird was too big and too heavy to put into his storage. So, he started to get worried. Hey, system. Can I teleport that carcass back to the other place without storing it in my storage? He asked. Yes. Oh, nice. Although, it looks quite heavy. How much will it cost? He asked. It will cost you 1,692,000 energy. Whoa, it's that heavy, he thought. Although, if I do send it now, I can spend the rest of the day freely. Hee <laughs> hee. I can just send them some monsters once a day, and it will be enough, he thought. All right, send it. He watched the corpse, expecting it to disappear from in front of his eyes, however, nothing of that sort happened. Instead, he just got a notification from the system. You must be in contact with the object you want to teleport. Sheesh. You could have told me earlier. All right, teleport me to the top of that object, he said. The stone he inhabited vanished from the spot appearing on top of the two halves of the bird's corpse. Thankfully, the two halves were stacked on top of each other, so he didn't have to worry about individually sending both of the halves. Okay, 
Can you send it now? He asked. Yes. Finally. All right. Do it, he said. Only then did the bird's corpse disappear from in front of his sight. Now that that is done, what else should I do? He started to wonder. Should I go kill more monsters and send it back to the villagers? He thought. That was the idea he had come up with within the moment, but now he had to think if that was a good idea or not. He thought for a second and said, Their problem is not that they have no food and require my help. Their real problem is the demon they call Fufiliki. If I can somehow get rid of that demon, I won't have to kill all of these monsters at all. They could do it themselves. They are probably far stronger than I am. Okay then, for now, I will just gather some food once in a while and send it back. While I will conserve energy and buy something useful for myself. Hmm, maybe it might even be a good idea to try and increase the cap using sound energy somehow, he thought. That settles it then. No more fully focusing on helping those humans. I will now start to use the energy for myself and get myself telekinesis and the human body as fast as possible. Thanks for listening. Like, share, and subscribe for more.